we're back. Uh, sort of an abrupt commercial break. Um, but <clears throat> people who are fascinated with shirtless Matt aside, uh, let's get back to Xing Yi. Uh, so Alex, as the newest member of our, our Xing Yi group, uh, is there anything on your mind, like any kind of questions? Uh, I know you've, you've seen Santi share at least, so you're not as familiar with, with actually doing it. Yeah. Um, I was practicing a little bit the, uh, uh, after you showed me, I'm still not, still not clear on how to go from point A to point B, but, um, I guess my, my biggest question is, um, when you said there was, a. Uh, I know it's this the singular stance is the is the groundwork to everything else in Shingi, but um, are there? I guess my 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 first question is: Are there other stances that you do in Shingi regularly aside from maybe additional stances that you do aside from the singular one, or is this just the the one end all? Uh, there are actually some supplementary standing exercises in Shingi. Um, it's not like a like a typical northern Chinese martial art, you know. You don't spend a lot of time training up multiple stances. Um, the the one that you spend the most time deliberately standing in is the um, sort of slightly back weighted middle of the road stance that uh, you know leg positioning that Santi Sher uses. Um, a lot of other styles have it. They'll call it like the uh, like the uh, three seven stance because the back leg has seventy percent of the weight, front leg has thirty percent of the weight. Um, sometimes it's a different ratio. You know, like it, it depends. Uh, you know, it depends on which style. But for the most part, um, most of the standing would just be Santi Sher. Uh, if you were going to be more serious about it, like you really wanted to get into the like the deeper elements uh, of uh, Xing Yi's internal development and meditative techniques, then you'd start to learn these other, these other stances. Um, there's a style derived from Xing Yi that was developed in the early 20th century called Yi Chuan. It is the same Yi as the Yi in Xing Yi. Um, and this, its primary stance is the first of Xing Yi's supplementary standing exercises. You know, feet parallel about uh, hips width apart, arms doing the holding the ball, you know, holding a ball against oh, the cool. chest or you know, that that's that's the basic stance of, of each one. Uh, and then they just kind of turn it to the side, make it a little diagonal. And that's their combat stance. But um, the, the main standing exercises for that style are the supplementary standing exercises for Xing Yi. So there's... Um, it's it's not the they're not the sort of things that would be easy to describe, um, but I, I will show them to you at some point. Um, cool. But for the most part, like especially as a beginner, you you really want to focus on Santi Sher. Um, there's a couple of people who got famous for only practicing Santi Sher and the first of the five fists, Peach One, chopping fist. So. Um, like the core of Xing Yi really is in those two exercises in a lot of ways. Um, and everything else is uh, like an elaboration of the basic structural and mechanical ideas that those two exercises have. But, you know. Did you initially we, show me um, Tuna Siba when I, like when I, because remember some of the, like, because uh, when I was practicing with Martin, he he made me go through a period of just doing this like tunasi ba, yeah exercise, and I think that you gave me if it wasn't that explicitly, then it seemed like something derived from that in the like the first few lessons, right? Probably probably something I picked up from Doctor Yang. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of uh, Doctor Yang's um, ideas about qigong are great because you can really it, it's the it's the specific principles for breathing and energy work stripped away of anything specific to any style. Mm -hmm. So if you get what he's talking about, 
you can turn around and plug it into whatever style that you are studying or whatever style you're learning, you know? So, um, I probably, probably used the, uh, the YMAA, you know, breathing techniques, but added into Xingyi. You know, I've done a lot more research since then. So um, I actually have more familiarity with the, the Xingyi way of thinking about and practicing those, um, mm. those methods. So yeah, now, now I would give you some straight up, you know, eight essentials. This is, you know, that's cool. In my opinion, the core of, of uh, Xingyi's Negong and you practice those, those um, skills directly in Santi Shi. So um that's the whoa is it yeah is yeah post on, uh, on, on, on the sickness that i can check out for that yeah oh yeah yeah i've got a couple of um i've got one uh one essay i wrote about uh the eight essentials specifically as as nagong training regimen for santi share uh and then another one that's just sort of looking a little more closely at each of the individual eight um Mm. You know, so it's kind I, of like, is it kind of like if, if it was like if if Santi shirt was is like the uh it's like the microscope is it like these are like different like um lenses put you know like overlays yeah so, that's that's one that's a, a good way to look at it you know you you were originally initially you start practicing Santi shirt looking to build a structure you know then when you get the structure down you're looking to kind of refine the musculature and the, the soft tissue the tendons and ligaments. Uh, to get yeah. them to really support and shore up that structure. Then after that, obviously, the, the next the next step is to either start developing the nagong for the martial applications, mm. or start the meditation for health applications. Ideally, you know, Xing Yi being uh, the way that it is, you learn both at the same time. Yeah, you know, as as soon as you get to the point where you can stand in Santi share for, you know, five to 10 minutes without just being drenched in sweat and, and, you know, having different parts of your body shake, depending on, you know, what you need to strengthen, uh, you would immediately start learning, uh, kind of a combined version of the, mm -hmm. the meditation and the, the Nagong development. They're really the same, you know, it's just, with the meditation stuff, you don't end every sentence with, and then you punch them in the face uh, as a, as a joke, but that's, that's for the most part, that's, that's where um, it, it all kind of leads to that same point. You know, it's definitely a pyramid type of uh, hierarchy. You know, once you get that physical foundation, you start going deeper with that until you're completely inside and then you start going deeper with that or higher with that hmm. but, yeah hmm. it, it, it's it's amazing how much um i love i guess it's just like so chinese where it's like we're going to make it really simple and there's infinite complexity within that fr uh, framework you know like it's just like i was yeah. i actually I, i'm like through a friend of mine i met this random dude who practices Xing Yi in new york and i don't know how good he is but he's been practicing it for a while and he's been to china and he was and he was just saying like you know like you know like with your mind you can like move chi in a circle like and you can like do that everywhere and i was just like <laughs> you know like where i had you know, it was just like it just kind of like cracked my head open where i was like i wasn't even thinking of that <laughs> you know yeah and then, like for a couple like playing around with like the directionality of chi you know like focusing it in different areas yeah yeah that's i mean that's probably the bulk at least half of the the eight essentials are are using your intent using your mind to lead the chi to different parts of your body you know you start off with just learning how to use the breathing to kind of gather the chi in your in your center of gravity in your dentian then you start to learn how to move it to, uh, you know, distal points of the body, top of your head, hands and feet. Um, that's, mm. that's, a, an exercise called three hearts facing the center. Um, and then you start to, you know, the deeper levels of that, 
um, you know, you start, uh, there's the four tips, the hair, mm. the teeth, the um, tongue, and the, awesome. the, the nails, the <laughs> finger and toenails. Um, you, so yeah. you learn how to, how to uh, lead the chi to your skin. The hair is shorthand for the skin. Hair grows out of skin. If you don't have healthy blood circulation to your skin, your hair is going to be all weird and fucked up. Um, you know, nails, uh, like fingernails and toenails, that's shorthand for the fingers and toes. Mm. When you can really uh, build the energy up in the fingers and toes, you can really use the um, like isometric uh, aspects of the way the fingers and toes are built you'll really be able to activate the tendons and ligaments. So you, you both saw me while I was sick with Crohn's disease and I still had a, a good amount of power for somebody that scrawny. This is how I did that. Having the, the tendons fighting. and ligaments. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not continue. I'm... Yeah. Um, so it, it's basically like um, that aspect of it is using the chi to augment uh, isometric exercises in the body. So you refine the musculature um, without building up a lot of mass. You know, there's two ways you can get strength, put on more mass, use a higher percentage of muscle fiber in any given motion or activity. So internal martial arts, any martial art really, but especially, especially Chinese martial arts, but especially, especially internal Chinese martial arts, is going to use that isometric principle to really up the, the muscle power, mm. but subordinate it to the mind and to the, um, the like tactile sensitivity of the body. Ooh. So instead of just being some muscle bound brute, you get that live, you know, stereotypical Bruce Lee type of body, but you know, you don't have to shave your chest hair like he did. Because <laughs> that's weird. Uh, yeah, it's very weird. No, I never did you didn't have to do that. <laughs> so the uh, the eight essentials is is um is where you want to go with your Santi share uh, practice. You know, you you want to take it to a point where you you develop um those those like capabilities uh from those eight points to the point where you know just like driving you sublimate driving so that you can have a conversation you can talk on the phone you can listen to the radio mm. while you're uh while you're driving and it's it's not a problem um so the uh the goal is to sublimate all of those those energy movement exercises uh to the point where the the sort of you know doing without doing the wu wei aspect of it from from Taoist philosophy uh you you embody that and because uh xing yi is a Taoist um derived martial art its meditative practices are like the quintessential Taoist meditation of uh, sitting and forgetting, Zhuo Wang from, from Zhuangzi. So you get to a point, uh, like I said earlier, the meditation on one hand and the Nagong on the other hand, they both kind of arrive at the same point where doing either of them is doing both of them at the same time. Hmm. And at the same time, that that refined uh cultivated peak of practice is not really doing anything in the sense that most people think of doing you know you're not head waggling as i would say when i when yeah. i mock people for being dumb you know you're not you're not running you're not verbalizing in your head thinking <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly it's it's real you know it's a real higher level of thought it's it's that base level of consciousness you are aware and you are sensitive but you aren't running any scripts in your head you aren't um you know there's no inner monologue there's no you know narrating your day to yourself you know 
Yeah, so, like, well, how should I pretend to be in this instance? It's just, you just are. It's very, I found it extremely useful in any kind of, uh, any kind of emergency situation. Anytime where it's sort of like, now it's serious, it's like Xingyi kicks in, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dr. Yang uh, mentions actually in his book that the, the big benefit, the point of learning Xingyi is to, to develop that, um, that spiritual strength and that, that like brave, undaunted attitude, you know, you just, you don't panic about what you're dealing with or what you're faced with in any given moment. You just deal with it. This is, that's it. You know, you're, if it's going to work, then that's what you're doing. If it's defending yourself against a mugger, yeah. that's what you're doing. If it's, you know, answering that loaded question from your girlfriend, that's what you're doing. And you're, you're, you're just going to do it directly. It's with deliberation. Yeah. Yeah. But, mm. but yeah. not that, um, not that like, not hmm? I missed that. I missed that too. Yeah. I was talking over you, Matt. Oh, no, I just said it's as opposed to like the sleepwalking that, you know, most people, you know. Yeah. Do. Yeah. They're, they're, they're so busy watching the anime show that they're the star of in their head that they don't actually do yeah. any of the things that they're doing. Um, Xing Yi is great for eliminating that sort of tendency in yourself. There's only, there's only, you know, what you're doing right now and you put everything into it. So, but not in, again, not in that contrived way that most people do. You literally put your whole body behind a punch. You know, it doesn't, it's, it's looks forceful because there's obviously force behind it. It doesn't, you know, it, it's real force. It's not the, the play force that you see in movie, in movie martial arts, you know, like there's no need to uh, hold in your breath and bugging your eyes out and stuff, you know, uh, yeah. it's just, the the mechanics focus all of uh all of the force all of the energy all of the momentum your body generates into one point um so again you that like if you see somebody practicing xing yi uh you should see relaxed muscles you know a relaxed face mm -hmm but not um not that like you know grit in the jaw grit in the teeth you know eyes are kind of bugging out of their head nostrils flaring you know that that's not what you're looking for it's it's not um it's not like stereotypical movie karate you know what i mean um so you want to you want to really you don't you don't want to do you don't want to do the like light and airy oh i'm you know yeah you don't want to do actual 70 80 year old man or woman tai chi chuan style you know you want to keep those muscles loose but you have the the serious mindset of xing yi um i've actually said a couple of times uh in, in some different discussions about this that xing yi is tactically aggressive not emotionally aggressive so you're not, you know, you're not, you're not using the unlimited power of rage and excess muscular tension to overwhelm people. It's not a fist fight in the schoolyard in fourth grade. It's mm -hmm. internal. You've, you've, um, you've, you've trained, uh, you know, to bring it back to the, what we were saying about the eight essentials, sublimating things and making them subconscious or unconscious so that you can do them without having to consciously narrate them or curate it in your head as you're doing it. Um, you make that structure automatic, that compact settled structure automatic. You make everything, you know, all the motions of your limbs focused on one point toward one goal automatic. You make that coordination of breathing and, um, isometric muscular tension automatic so that you're not going in throwing this mm. this wild you know 
haymaker style punch, whether it's a big hook or a straight thrust, it's, you know, there are a lot of people who, who uh, in the martial arts who no matter what kind of hand technique they're using, it's essentially a haymaker, you know, because it's just that wild, you know, little kid whipping around. That's, that's not where you're going with Shin. Um, everything is focused and deliberate and practical. Uh, you don't want to, you know, you're not going to be doing a lot of um, flourishing hand motions and fancy show off stances. Um, so I guess that, that brings it right back to Alex's um, question about stances. You know, the reason that you really focus on Santi share is that's the sort of, you know, when you watch a, a boxing match or a UFC match, look at their legs. They're pretty much in that, that stance or a variation of that stance. It's really useful for actual fighting that, and their footwork mm. shuffles, you know, forward and back side to side. Xing Yi's footwork is called inch stepping, you know, because it really is just little short motions. Mm -hmm. None of these big show off motions, none of these huge stances, you know, that's great for a training, but you know, if you try and do like a, like a split in the middle of a fight, you're going to, you're going to get hurt. Awesome. So <laughs> this is random, but I wanted to throw in something about, uh, just like when I was like, before we started talking, I was just thinking about this because you said, you said something you were talking about, I'd be like, Oh, excuse me, talking about anime. But like, I think that the, I, I have found that this sort of imaginal layer is actually extremely important for engage, like fully engaging practices. And yeah. It, it's hard to articulate because there's a distinct because a lot of people it, there's a difference between that and LARPing you know what I mean because it's kind of like wait like even like the like Alex the fact that you have like a fucking Sith Lord as your avatar like that's what's yeah. up because there's something to that you know what I mean and like watching like Shaw Brothers Kung Fu movies that Brad it, like uh like you know it was like part of the training an important part you know like Venom's Mob and and uh and Fist of the North Star, like, fuck, like, I wouldn't have been putting in that time if I hadn't seen Fist of the North Star, you know? Excellent anime. I can actually explain um, why I use this, um, this avatar for just about everything. So this is, um, it, it's, it's from the uh, poorly made game, uh, The Force Awakens, uh, or not Force Awakens, I'm sorry, uh, The Force Unleashed uh, 2. Uh, where the uh, the premise of it is, is that it's the uh, it's the clone of the of the main character from the previous game, The Force Unleashed. Um, and what what Vader ended up doing was Vader, Darth Vader was his master, and ended up um, he decided to splice his DNA with Darth Maul, which is why he's got all these oh cool these dark black tattoos all over him, and he's you know, he's clearly bald. And he's got this mohawk, a spike going across his head. Um, but he uh, in I edited this so that the eyes are blue instead of um, instead of like this clear Sith red just because I appreciate the color blue better. It's more aesthetic. Oh cool. yeah. Um, but he you know obviously he wields two lightsabers because two why not? Um, but Vader made this monster that he was like his own Frankenstein monster that he could not control. He decided to to create this clone. This variant between Darth Maul and uh, Galen Merrick, I think he's called, um, with Galen Merrick's closeness and strength in the Force and Darth Maul's absolute chaotic ferocity to try to create this ultimate Sith assassin weapon. The but he couldn't control it. <laughs> exactly. That's the that's the that's the great thing about it too is that he was absolutely limitless in all of his rage. And it was one of the few times, I think, in the, uh, if you read through some of the stuff that they wrote about, um, uh, Maul Killer, I think is what they called this character. Um, yeah. Maul Killer was uh, one of the few times where Darth Vader was actually, actually experienced fear as Darth Vader. As Anakin, you know, as Anakin, he had, um, and as a younger Anakin, he, he, he did experience fear and then anger and then hate Constantly. and then led to suffering. <laughs> yeah. But you know, for the for one of the few times as Vader, as a Sith Lord, he actually experienced fear. 
Now, as to whether Mall Killer is canon or not is, is, is meaningless. But I, I chose so, this as it was so... Post-canon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, it's such a, you know... I, I don't want to sound really cheesy or anything like that, but I, I personally felt, felt like this was my own internal, like Xing Yu, it's my own internal very aggressive emotions that I have to deal with. It's my, if I can, if I can get a hold on my, the anger and the hate and all this, all this stuff that I could use to fuel my, fuel something, um, yeah. regardless of whether it's my fight, my, my ability to, you know, fight in a combat situation or whatever, um, I would, I would have more focus. Um, and that's just what the thing that came to my mind when I, decided to edit this uh, and use it as my as my avatar for pretty much everything yeah. um so you know when when i first when i first met um uh our uncle sickness and uh started <laughs> studying martial arts under him it's this you know this this ability to hone and focus and refine all this raw energy that i just didn't know what to do with mm. yeah and it's funny because Brad, I, since you've started teaching me martial arts, I've been trying to get you to teach me Xing Yi for the longest. Like we went straight to Bagua. It's like, I want to learn Xing Yi. Yeah. And <laughs> in some ways, Bagua is, I mean, it's more complex, but I, yeah. I find that some people have an easier time um, with that. And we are uh, in our last 10 minutes. So we'll start to wrap it up here. Yeah. Um, but uh, as far as what you were saying about, you know, using your emotions and refining your focus um, and powering things with the emotions, Xing Yi is one of the few martial arts uh, with a meditative component that specifically requires you to not only not weaken your emotions, but actually strengthen them. Hell yeah. Um, you know, your emotions are the, the, the like root, the well that powers your spirit. Uh, in, in the, the Chinese conception. So, uh, you know, your fighting spirit, your, your will to survive and to win, it's, it's directly connected to your emotions. And if you become really placid and really not emotionally weak in the sense of, of like you're a pushover, but weak in the sense of you don't experience very strong extremes, either positive or negative, it's just, you know, still mm -hmm. water. Still water is stagnant water. You don't want that in Xing Yi. Mm. You know, you have to be able to, you have to be able to have that aggressive feeling. You know, not just say, I feel aggressive and it's blank. It's, yeah. uh, I know Matt loves this one. Uh, one of the Xing Yi sayings about the, uh, you know, describing its fighting spirit is the face is pleasant, but the eyes are poisonous. You know, you, you have that when you like look in, in, in yeah, when you look in a Xing Yi man's uh eyes, you should see, you you know, you should hear sting from Dune, I will kill you. And that's that's what it is. You know, you'll notice um actually, you know, for the life of me now, I can't remember if if uh either of you have seen me spar with other people, but people get scared when you look at them like that. And that's one of the big benefits of Xing Yi is if there's somebody out there and their emotions are turbulent, they're just, you know, they're in a mood or they feel a way you give them that look, you know, yeah. it's nothing personal, but I'll cave your chest in. Mm -hmm. They stop. They don't want to, you know, every fight is a fight to the death, whether somebody dies or not, as far as Xing Yi is concerned. That's one of the things that makes it a military style of martial arts. You have yeah. that military mindset. So, Alex, your time in the Marines will be really well served because that, that the way the Marines think about warfare and conflict in general um, really goes, that's going to go a long way to making it easy to pick things up in Xing Yi because it's a similar, you know, a similar sort of mindset. I don't want to have to kill you, but I will kill you with absolutely no hesitation. Yeah, totally. <laughs> There's, um, uh one of my one of my uh the things that i studied that i after i after um after i left marine corps um 
honorable discharge. Uh, I was in the reserves and I was doing more study on um, going through boot camp and then the infantry school and then going to my unit um, then practicing with my unit and going to drills and stuff. Um, uh, I wanted to look more into McMap and I was trying to look more into the advanced stuff of, uh, of, of uh, McMap. But um, McMap stands for our Marine Corps Martial Arts Program. It used to be called something else, but I can't remember for the life of it. It was something weird, some weird acronym. There's always an acronym in everything uh, in the federal government and the Department of Defense. Um, and consequently, you know, every single branch of the, of the military. Um, but uh, I had no one to, to spar with or to train with. Um, so I kind of was just reading through some of this stuff and trying to absorb it as much as I could. But I wasn't, I didn't really go through the motion. I didn't really, you know, try to strike a bag or anything like that. I ended up eventually getting um, like a yoga mat that I had, this old, old foam yoga mat, and just wrapped it around a tree and just started punching the tree because I didn't know what else to do. Um, but uh, all the going through uh, boot camp and infantry school, uh, Paris Island, uh, it was all just a basic right hook, left hook, uppercut, straight thrust. Yeah. Uh, and then some of the arm locks and throat locks there you're trained to kill is, uh, yeah. is the, is the basic point. And that's, it, 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 you know, you required physical strength and physical aptitude and, you know, being hand-eye coordinated reason, reasonably well. And, but it had function. There was a reason why you were learning all this stuff mm. and I wanted to learn more, but I was kind of, I was hindered because I simply just didn't, um, uh, I just didn't have any way to practice with. And also at my unit, there wasn't, there wasn't anyone that was trained that could, I could practice with. There was a black belt with a red stripe. Uh, black belt with a red stripe means that you, uh, you're an instructor uh, in McMap. And uh, as far as I know, in order to, I could, I could, it could have changed since, uh, since my time, but um, as far as I know, in order to achieve the black belt with the red stripe, um, you are required to fight two other Marines of, of equal skill. At the same time? At the same time. Whoa. You are required to fight them both. Um, yes. And uh, in, order to, um, in order to go from uh, the tan belt is the first belt, and then there's the gray belt, and then the green earth. I think it's, yeah, I think it's tan, gray green no maybe it's the other way around i think i think i'm going i think it's tan green gray and then black um and then with with your black belt you get like individual stripes uh, so you get a red stripe if you're an instructor you get a white stripe if you're like or like two white stripes or something you get a blue stripe or something you go way up the chain and you practice and you keep studying and the uh, my my senior drill instructor um, that uh, that trained me when I was on Paris Island. I was in uh, Kilo Company, so Killer Kilo in Third Battalion. That company is the single most difficult company to train under, uh, and Third Third Battalion is the is the hardest of the four. You have four. There's first, second, third, and fourth. And fourth was for females only, but for Third Battalion, Killer Kilo Killer Kilo was the. Uh, it was just their their standards were so far above everyone else's standards even amongst third battalion because there was like it was first second third and then kilo um and the, my senior drill instructor uh had been training marines for a number of years and he had a as a drill instructor he eventually had attained his his black belt and red stripe um and he, this dude just I would not want to be an army of dudes facing this guy alone because he would kill all of me <laughs> every single one of me and then ask for round two come on come on oh oh there's that's uh, all of you surely there's more of you come on I'm not done yet uh, you know one of those guys. <laughs> but also this dude was built like you know Arnold Schwarzenegger or like you know Sylvester Stallone this dude was he wasn't particularly tall but this dude look, this man could probably punch and level some metal. This guy, oof. he was a great guy too. Um, Excellent. But uh, you know, um, I wanted 
I wanted to be able to attain that black belt and be able to earn it, but I never got that opportunity, unfortunately. Um, but you know, it is what it is, but being able to, uh, you know, at least have some of the, some of the material that they, that they used. And I still have my old manuals, uh, which have been used for, uh, at least a decade. Um, the guys that in the last five, six years that are, you know, our sergeants now are using the same male manuals that I was using. Um, so on occasion I'll look through those and just do some practice stuff. It's a good time. Yeah. Well, when we start, when you get to a point where you can start, uh, learning Xing Yi's applications, you'll see a lot of the same stuff. Excellent. Uh, Xing Yi doesn't use, um, controlling joint locks like mm -hmm. the Aikido you learned or like a lot of martial arts. Mm -hmm. Uh, it uses what it calls Eagle seizing. Ooh. You take that hand and you grab chunks of flesh and you pull it off the bone. <laughs> Oh, that's just like Pai Mei. It's like the guy, right? Um, in, uh, iron, iron armor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just pull it like pulling things off. Well, we're, uh, we're under a minute, so um, yeah, we should probably wrap things up. Uh, this has been a good discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it, and we will definitely be doing this again. Thank you. It's good. <laughs> Wait, last bit on Iron Armor. If there's a Brad Kung Fu movie, we need to have two actors that look vaguely like you to play like fake Brads that get taken. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? Just put a fake beard over somebody. <laughs> oh, that's your brother killed. <laughs>